Today we're going to learn how to align objects to the direction of motion using Blender simulation nodes. So let's do it. Let's go to geometry nodes, create a new profile. And first of all, I'm going to explain you the difference between aligning an object that follows a curve and aligning an object that follows a vector, an animation, a motion, a movement. So we can see better the difference between each other. So let's create a simple point and let's add to this point an object. So we can see like an arrow. The best object is a cone because it's like an arrow. So it will be easier to see the orientation of the movement. Let's make it a smaller, something like that and something like that. Okay, we have this object and now let's try to create a curve and make this object follow the curve. So what I'm going to do is to join here with join geometry a curve. And I'm going to use a bezier. Let's go into here. And now we have a curve and an object. So let me add more resolution and make it more something like that. So we can see better the curvature. I'm going to set this view and hide the grid. And now what I want is that this object follow this curve. So remember, like always, we need to sample the curve and we need to update the position of this object with the position of the curve. So now the object is following the curve thanks to factor. Factor 0 is here and factor 1 is the end of the curve. Perfect. However, this object, as you can see, is not aligned to the curve direction, right? So to do it like this with a curve, what we have to do, that probably you know, and use here a line rotation to vector. Because this is rotation and we want a line rotation to a vector. Which vector? Tangent. So we connect tangent here. No, this is a degree. Look at the color. Have to be the same. A vector. And now, as you can see, look before, after. If we animate this, the object is following the curve. We can make it smaller if you want. So why we use tangent? Because remember that the tangent is that if we have, for example, in this point, we have the normal. So every point have a normal. The tangent is the line that is perpendicular to the normal and have 90 degrees. This is the tangent, right? This one is this line. So if we say a line to tangent for every point, we are saying follow this line. So at the end, basically what we are doing is follow the curvature of the curve. That's why we use tangent to align an instance in rotation with a tangent, right? And because it's a vector. Okay, probably you know that. But now the question is, how we do that if we don't have a curve? If we have, for example, a movement, a vector, but we don't have a curve, what do we use? So this is really easy. Let's delete this and delete the curve. So now we have only the point. And let's create a particle system so we can see better. So here we have the object. Let's use simulation zone. And what I want is to connect this here. And I want to create a particle system. So let's use joint geometry and connect it here. Because remember, in simulation zone, it repeats an action every frame. So every frame is going to add a copy of this. However, now if we press play, nothing happens because we don't have any set position, any offset. So let's create the initial velocity, like always, with a store name attribute. We want to create a vector, a direction. Let's select vector. Let's call this velocity. So we know that this is the velocity. And what I want is that for every point have a different direction. So let's use, like always, random value in vector. And let's select minus one and one. Right now, if I press play, nothing happens because 
First of all, let's call this initial velocity. So nothing happens because we are not using this attribute. So let's use set position and let's use this attribute with name attribute. You can copy this, copy and paste it and connect it in offset because we want to offset the points with this vector. And now if we press play, something happens, but all the points are going to the same direction. Why? Because we have the same seat. So let's use as in time frame. Like this, every frame we have a different seed, a different vector. And if I press play, we have these particles that go to all directions. Okay, they go too fast. So let's decrease this speed with vector math and select a scale. And now we can decrease. It's really annoying that every time I add a node here, all the nodes move to the right. I don't know if this can be disabled. If someone knows, please tell it to me. If not, I hope that the Blender team put something to disable this. That when you add a node, everything goes to the right. Because it's really annoying, I promise you. Anyway, let's come back to the point. So we have this, and thanks to this node, I can decrease the velocity. Okay, something like that. Now, what I want is to make the particles not go in this direction, in minus z. I want to do something like that. So I'm going to say, don't follow negative z, setting here zero, as you can see, and I'm going to push it more in this direction. So I'm going to select max three. Perfect. Maybe select one, something like that. And now I want to add gravity. I want the points, the particles, follow this. And don't worry, later we're going to learn how to align them. So to do this, we need to add gravity. And we need to update the initial velocity. So let's use store name attribute. We want to use the same attribute because we want to update it with gravity. And now let's use the name attribute. Paste it, select vector. So if we're going to like that, it's the same. By the way, select vector. Nothing happens because it's reusing the same information. So it's storing the same information and it changed. However, let's add here a vector math. I'm going to scan this because I don't want to push all the nodes to the right. And let's use vector math and select add. And connect it here. And now, if we add any change here, any new vector is going to update this, right? So let's make it negative. And now we have gravity. I don't want too much. Something like that. Perfect. So we have like a fountain, as you can see. And if you want to decrease the main speed of the velocity, then what we have to do is start here and scale. I'm going to scan this because I don't want to push all the nodes. And I want to make a copy of that and select a scale. Connect this here and this here. And now with this, I can decrease the main velocity. Let me check. Okay. I'm going to make this more power, something like that. Okay, before we continue, I want to give different colors to this. So let's use set material, select it for material. Let's select the material view and let's go to the shade editor. And to give random colors, I want object info and select random with a color ramp. Connect it here. And what I want is to select different colors. So let's select all the colors that exist. For example, this one, copy this, set this one, paste it here. And now select this one or the other, it doesn't matter, and select far. So we have all the range of the colors. As you can see, we have different colors for each instance. Okay, let's come back to geometry nodes. And now, how we align this to the vector animation movement? Actually, I'm just telling to you. 
if we have the vector, right? The vector is the velocity, the movement, the animation. We don't need to use any tangent because the tangent is the vector. So we need to use the vector velocity and connect it here. And now, as you can see, all the objects are aligned perfectly to the vector velocity. As easy as that. And like this, you can align any object to their velocity, as you can see. And remember, you can use any other vector. You don't have to use, for example, this initial velocity. What you can do, I'm going to save this project so you have it in the pattern if you want it. What you can do, let's delete all this and let's, for example, use, um, I'm going to use a nice texture. So, actually, I don't need this, I think. Let me select color. And right now, we have this. All them follow the same position. So what we have to do is for every new point, give a different position, a different vector. So let's use index. And now we have this. And they are going there because we have normalized. Or what you can do if you want is to use also vector math. I'm going to discount this because I know it will push my nodes. And let's decrease 0 0.5. In theory, right now, it's using the next vector. Hmm. Why is it doing this? That's a bit weird. Let me see what's going on here. Hmm, interesting. Why is it doing this? Why is it doing this? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let me see. Why is it doing like that? Maybe if I not normalize under like this. That's interesting. Let me think. Ah, now it's working perfectly. Yeah, I don't know why. Sometimes when I use the normalize, is flat. I don't know why. That's why usually I prefer doing like that. As you can see. Okay, now let's decrease this. And now we're using a noise texture to animate this. As you can see. And what you can do, of course, is to add 4D. And now we can animate this with a same time. Okay, if I'm not, it's too fast. With seconds, it's too fast. So let's use math and let's divide this by something to make it a slow by 10. Yeah, 10 is okay. And as you can see, we are making that the objects follow a nice texture and they are aligned to their own vector, as you can see. So that's the difference between aligning objects with a curve and with a vector. If you like this video, give a like, subscribe, and remember you can do this project and many more on my Patreon. And see you in the next video.